Welcome to another episode of Radio with Pictures where we say here are the women. And when we talk about women, we talk about women who are courageous, who are resilient and women are also diverse. And joining us in this program of Radio with Pictures, we welcome Mickey Wally from the House of Chameleon. Mickey is, amongst other things, also a community media activist. Great to have your company, Mickey. Thank you, Sharon. We have Andy Vasulevu. FemLink Pacific's convener in Vanualevu and Rambi now, exactly. but you're also a founder and a key facilitator for Transcend Oceania. Yes. yes, that's a new network. Yes. Of peace facilitators working together. Yes, justice and development as well. Okay, thank you. Lydia Wangalidaki from the Catholic Women's League in Nosori, but I understand, Lydia, you're also part of the Catholic Women's League Peace and Security Committee? Yes. Sharon. So you, you work on that area as well as some of the other projects? Yes. Okay, Church. thanks for, your, for joining us. And last but not least, I have to say you are the reigning Andy Senikau and you're also representing the Pacific Rainbow, Rainbows Advocacy Network, also known as PRAN from Lautoka. Mm -hmm. How are you, Agu? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. Right, so we're going to start by talking about on radio with pictures our experiences not only during Tropical Cyclone Winston, but the other experiences of dealing with natural disasters. So I'll start with you, Agu. How did you and your network prepare? What were your experiences in the height of Tropical Cyclone Winston, and more importantly, in this recovery stage? Uh, compared to the last uh, the cyclone that I experienced was the information I received, I. I prepared myself well, not only myself, but I relied the message to my family for mm -hmm. us to prepare ourselves during the cyclone. So compared to the last cyclone and this uh, the cyclone, the, the latest cyclone, which is the Winston, really prepared well that nothing happens to us. And you've been quite involved with the Red Cross in um, the post-cyclone response, yes? Yes, Sharon. What have you been doing and where have you been going? Uh, last week I was based at the operation center, which I deals with the uh, the the, um, the splitting of all volunteers that were volunteering. So you've been organizing yes, volunteers. Yes, organizing volunteers. And this is in Lotoka. And this is in Lotoka branch. Uh, which areas for them to cover in a day, and how many um, how many um, volunteers to go to a village in a settlements that have been affected by a tropical cyclone uh, Winston. So when were you mobilizing from Lautoka? How far were the volunteers traveling? Was it just in Lautoka um, or was it out to Nandi as well as Mba, Tabo, Raki Raki? Uh, as for Lautoka branch, it only deals, uh, looks after the Lautoka area from the last village on your way to Mba, which is Tendamu, and the last village to Nandi side, which is the Loma Loma, uh, Loma, Loma village. It's still so quite a lot of... It is quite a long... Uh, uh, place to cover but uh, since we have only less volunteers we uh, after last week we covered one side of Lotoka. Okay. So the process is Thanks. Continuing. Lydia, how did you and the Catholic Women's League members and others in your community organize for Tropical Cyclone Winston? What were the lessons learned from past experiences? Uh, concerning my past experiences on uh, way back in 19... Uh, 86, that's when I was uh, stationed in a uh, bar with my husband. That was Eric and Nigel. Mm. Uh, on uh, limited Two information. Back back yes. Mm. Uh, almost like uh, the Winston one, but it, this one had a U turn. But with Eric and Nigel, they had a span of about half an hour to one hour between, uh, because Eric had just had this, uh, Nigel, I mean, the eye of the hurricane was still uh, there, which were we did not fail, and straight away uh, Nigel struck. So these two had some kind of similarities in them, but in terms of information and communication, I have seen that with uh, the past two hurricanes, there was not enough uh, preparation uh, on the whole because of this uh, lack of information. And uh, communication at that time was sparsely developed in terms of Nigel now with the Catholic Women's League. I was uh, given the opportunity to be the weather forecaster on that. I had my turn of uh, ringing around to women mm -hmm. as far as they live, but by that time I had no other ways of uh, reaching my out um, colleagues in Vanuelev mm -hmm. and the outer parts. But with the women that I had made in touch with, 
they were prepared. And you were passing on information, information as best you could. Yes. Mickey, in terms of uh, representing a very diverse group of, um, a very diverse community, what's been important for you in terms of preparedness? S thank you, Sharon. So what's been very important in noting the recent um, catastrophe of uh, Winston, um, for us it was ensuring that our security is priority, not just for our families, but in terms of how we identify ourselves as transgender people. And what was interesting was before the cyclone, we sent out messages to all our different sisters, and we found out that one of our girls, apparently of Management Collective, for House of Chameleon was in Ovalau. So we quickly mobilized. We found out that she was at an evacuation center already and that she was, you know, taking him to the messages too. So for us, it's just ensuring that our security plan is a priority and we're sending that out to all our members. And um, for the member of the House of Chameleon who, who went early to an evacuation center, did she feel safe? Did she feel secure? Did she feel that her personal security needs were being met? Well, you know what? She told us after the cyclone, she felt super fine and well mm -hmm. um, because she was able to adapt to the environment. And, okay. and that's what House of Chameleon is about. We adapt and adjust, we can be. And I think for, um, for, for one of our girls in Ovalau, she also told us that she was also part of the assessment team. So she was cooking, she was doing all the masculine work as well, um, but she also held her identity um, in the way she wanted to hold herself as. So she was fine and well too. It's so amazing, isn't it, when we actually break down the kind of support that the communities need. It's not heteronormative and it's not able-bodied. Absolutely. Andi Vasu, you once again has, have catalyzed a lot of the work that we've done in, together. Um, thinking back for where we started the Women's Weather Watch campaign, how, what's really struck you in terms of all of these experiences leading up to that weekend? What have we learned and how, how can we prepare better? Thank you, Sharon. For me personally, um, um, the, the, the um, incident of uh, uh, Cyclone Winston uh, trigger for me uh, the experiences that I've had in the past, uh, most especially way back in 2004 uh, when that um, flood uh, hit Lombasa. It was also, there was strong wind and flooding and uh, uh, our homes were destroyed and uh, straight after that you visited Lombasa and uh, people were still picking up the pieces and tidying up after the flood and um, it was I, my finding is uh, that was really key because at during this time information and communication is uh, affected uh, most of the time there is a block uh, there's an information uh, gap. Blackout. Hold that thought, Andi Vasu, because we're going to talk about the kind of information and communication we need as we plan forward in light of the new National Development Plan. That's after the break on Radio with Pictures. Welcome back and thanks for joining us on Radio with Pictures. We were in conversation um, with Andi Vasu and we'll come back to that point, Andi Vasu as we talk about in this segment of the show, what do we want to see in five years' time? And what is, from your experiences, what are your recommendations as the VG government starts to finalize the, the new National Development Plan? So, Lydia, what, what's the development that's needed on the ground now? Uh, at the moment, uh, on, uh, on the ground, uh, if we could see more women, at the village uh, scenario, um, at least having two women into the Tikina or village or at provincial uh, level so that they can uh, be the voice for women in uh, whatever communities they do belong to. So are you saying that no development plan from the community level should progress unless women have had a say it can't be gender blind anymore? It cannot uh, be gender blind anymore. Yes, uh, Sharon, uh, I would uh, like to see that more women are into the uh, village uh, settings and then at uh, local government level, so that uh, we've our got to voice, make that yes. change so that the plan in mm. five years is inclusive. Right. Agu, from the assessments you've obviously been hearing, um, what what should be prioritised? 
I think the information that uh, it needs, that is given out should be received uh, to the communities, especially to those who are far away from the, the, the from uh, urban areas, those who live in the rural settlements, those who never access to electricity and transport. Be uh, because uh, those some of the settlements which I've visited, they never received any information of the weather. That is why they never prepared themselves. That's why their homes are totally destroyed. And does that mean in terms of the development plan that we need to ensure that the, you know, the infrastructure, yeah. roads, communication the reaches these communities, these communities especially these in, the rural in the dark? Yes. yes. OK, thank you. Mickey, five years down the line, what is the Fiji you want to see? Um, you know, the principle of leaving no one behind is, you know, crucially important that, th that national development planning processes need to take into consideration. And what that means is in inclusive of the diaspora in Fiji. So there's quite a diverse um, few identities in Fiji that people are comfortable in identifying with. And that means there's LBT people. We too want to be part of the processes of national development. So it's also about political participation. Yes, Fiji in five years is about 30% and more percentage of women and young people and even girls in all our diversities at the decision level making processes. So like Lydia is saying, starting at the community level. So we have to change quite a bit in the way that things yes. are being done now yes. in order to, to meet that vision for five years. Right. Yes. OK, Andy Vasu, with your knowledge going around Vanualebu, the outreach into Rambi, knowing how the development process works, what is your recommendation? What is the Fiji you'd like to see in five years? And what should be the rehabilitation recovery Pro, um, priorities? Like I've uh, said before, Sharon, uh, information and communication. Looking at the local action and global policy, uh, Be uh, Beijing Platform for Action uh, is one of the most progressive documents in a blueprint that talks about uh, uh, women and equality as, as well as uh, women and the media. So uh, for me, this is a, there's still a big gap in terms of uh, disaster uh, and uh, communication. Mm. So uh, we need a more, uh, more accurate, more um, precise and decisive uh, communication pre and post disaster. And uh, this needs to be uh, the, in the plan well beforehand, mm. uh, right throughout the year. So mm. when the disaster is coming, already those who are supposed to take uh, this into account and into action should already be in place. I've got a uh, quote here from Kalasita and Bandrao, uh, the Klopkot area of Mba, who says, we don't have a disaster committee, but we have a committee that involves two women who sees that during times of natural disaster, if anyone has a problem, they come up with the ideas of how to solve it. So women are organizing informally, but what do we need, how, what needs to change? Yes, I was uh, mm. moving there. Mm. Um, so also from the Be Beijing Platform for Action, it talks about women's participation. And uh, uh, like we're already doing with the Women's Weather Watch as uh, one of the, the programs we are uh, doing well with Family Pacific in partnership with rural women, um, which is uh, engaging women, improving their participation in terms of protection and prevention, where women are telling their story and sharing the uh, exact experience that they are facing at the moment of crisis. If uh, the weather forecast is coming, the women are the ones that are really sharing the realities mm. of the day. They say, oh, the, the rivers are rising, which means it must be raining up in the mountains. Mm. And uh, these stories are shared by SMS and communicated by the network of women and uh, uh, with Family Pacific's role as uh, being in uh, um, communication with, uh, with the weather forecast at all times and uh, consistency uh, with the accuracy of that uh, forecast. So uh, with us conveners at the rural centers, uh, getting this information, informing the women and also feedback from women with what they are facing, facing right there at the ground level. And uh, this, for me, it's, it's not only about us taking, waiting and uh, listening to the uh, information we are receiving from the forecast, 
but as well as listening to each other and uh, calling on to women. This is all about you as well. You informing yourselves and also communicating your status where you are. So, sh so are you saying that there needs to be more listening? So we have the formal structures, but that there needs to be more listening to the to what women are saying from their own communities, from their own networks. That kind of accountability, Mickey? Yes. Absolutely. I think I just also want to recognize the many women that are already doing the work and Family Pacific and its members, even noting the two women in wherever part of Fiji they're in, that's important for us to recognize. And it means to say that women are already doing the work. Mm -hmm. And I guess the call is for more as well in mm -hmm. terms of not just participation, but the recognition of more room, more listening and accountable mechanisms in place to monitor some of the decisions that are made at the grass to the to the policy table so have the women in the policy spaces right. but also support and empower in in our own spaces as well mm. thank you so much after the break we're going to find out a little bit more about just what women are doing in their communities Welcome back to Radio with Pictures. I'd like to jump straight into this, Lydia, with you in terms of the amazing work that you've been doing with the eco-friendly bags. Is this something, you know, given that we need to look at employment, right, and income generation for the next five years, mm. what are the women doing and how can this be scaled up? Uh, at the moment, uh, Sharon, we are trying to scale up to diversity, to diversify whatever we have at hand in terms of uh, activities that the Catholic Women's League have brought into use. Uh, in collaboration with the Indonesian government, we could see that Sister Anna, who has gone back, uh, leaving behind something for us to ponder with so that we can bring up our economy as uh, women in diversity. So at the moment we are rebuilding up uh, that and generating it and trying to go out after this mm -hmm. because it's a useful, uh, uh, in useful thinking that uh, it hasn't been damaged. Everything was intact, like bringing uh, this material uh, cloth from uh, once again collaborating with Super City Councils. Mm -hmm. So we have got that uh, in hand, plus the recycle, to rebuild our economy so that we can have something in our pocket right throughout the Catholic Women's League with 34 parishes. That's what we are trying to regain at the moment so that so we can have some across money. So 34 parishes. Yes. Is that nationwide then? Uh, only with the Catholic Women's League. League. But then there are some others that have come in with us on uh, other church uh, groups. Mm. We have shared with them whatever Sister Anna has brought to our shores mm. so that they can have an income uh, generating project also going with other church uh, denominations. So with the 34 parishes, how many women in each parish are involved in this project? Uh, they ha yes, has Sharon, they have their own numbers because I remember the biggest number is with Nandera Parish, 150 plus, I have 57. So in the whole there's about 150 women behind me mm. doing such uh, community and, and level so work. And so to scale up, what, what are these, some of the ideas from, from the skills that you have? How could this be scaled up? What could you be making? Uh, at the moment we are making purse out of this uh, supermarket wrappers. Uh, bags which are called eco bags and mm -hmm. we want all the women in Fiji to have one taking it to work so that you can mm -hmm. do without these uh, plastic bags mm -hmm. say no to plastic bags say in terms no. of climate change and it could be producing a whole lot of other products as well uh, yes sanitary products at the moment that mm -hmm. we can always take out to evacuation centers mm -hmm. So this is something. So these that could be some of the things that go into the preparedness kits as uh, well. Yes. Thank you, Sharon. Agu. Um, in terms of the Pran Network, you're based out in Lotoko. Are there any small activities or projects that you'd like to see scaled up? Mm, so the understand Kao, one of the campaigns that been the, that been like the updating of all the the informations on the social media, on Facebook, in the updates from uh, like. For example, the weather, the weather updates mm. to all 
members of the community, the LGBT community and also the, min the minorities. Mm. So for this also in terms of your work as Brown and House of Chameleon, who's supporting the work? I know the House of Chameleon was successful with the Frida grant, yeah. um, but how can those, those, what may seem to be just information updates, but how can those information updates be upscaled to be more transformative? Right. So, you know, we get the fact that the culture is not about working in silos, but really about strengthening participation with even not just LBT groups, but with heteronormative organizations mm -hmm. that are slowly becoming inclusive. And we recognize that too. And having said that, you know, Frida Grants has been perfect for House of Chameleon to really do our work as, as young feminists, um, not just on sexual reproductive health and rights, but really on the work on environmental security as well as personal security. Mm -hmm. So in terms of um, the work that we're carrying out, pre Andi Seneca, we're making sure that, yes, Frida Grants is going to still going to be used to support some of the campaigns and the activities as well. Mm. And how could yeah. others get involved with that, uh, Mickey, with the kind so of work Absolutely. That so we believe in artivism. So that's art and activism. So we have a large following on social media for House of Chameleons. So hit us on Facebook and on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, but apart from that, we normally send out all our updates. So we send it even out to our LBT networks and even our allies, because mm -hmm. we recognize the allies are our partners in solidarity. And at the same time, we're also hearing that Frida is opening its second call, and that's happening from July to August. And yes, we also have young women from Fiji that are also sitting in the board that can also influence some of these dec decisive, important, urgent action priorities from the Pacific, but from Fiji. Thank you, Miki. So, Andy Basu, you, you journey, you know, through Vanualevu, you journey into Rambi now. What are some of the projects, you know, the innovations by women that, as we talk about the rebuilding of our country, could be contributing to both social and economic um, stability? Thank you, Sharon. Um, as I have said before, communication and information is key uh, and vital. And this is not only talking about uh, uh, forms of communication, it's also about skills and uh, uh, styles of communication. How do we communicate uh, ourselves better? Uh, moving on from uh, uh, disaster response, for example, uh, uh, yes, we were talking about communication of information, but as well as uh, uh, the psychosocial services mm. that some of the organizations that we are involved in work with uh, in terms of doing peace building and uh, uh, trauma healing, community trauma healing. Um, and uh, trauma healing also involves uh, uh, skills that build on uh, uh, arts and uh, uh, contemporary arts and uh, other forms of arts. And uh, because arts is, is, is a healing process and this is much needed in communities whereby uh, recovering from disasters and uh, women as we can see because they are already in their groups they are a step ahead in their communities uh, working with these uh, approaches uh, I have been moving around from the Conrove and Bua and Madhuata I was actually in Bua on the Friday before the cyclone Winston hit. And uh, uh, I've seen what women are already engaging with. Those who are involved with income generation projects, uh, working with their, using their arts and crafts, as well as uh, innovative uh, projects with the cooperative shop, as we have heard before, as well as uh, seed banks and uh, uh, poultry, livestock. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, there's a this, lot, that, there's women a lot are doing. that women can do and they need support. And we need, so let's support and yeah. scale up. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much all for joining us on this episode of Radio with Pictures. Just amplifying the fact that there's so much amazing work going on in the community. All we need to do is scale it up for Fiji. Join us again in another episode of Radio with Pictures. Thanks for your company. <laughs>